Hey guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter with your basic Sorgonomics for this morning, afternoon, or evening. Please delete as appropriate all props to Inako Almanac. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk about a little bit of a history. You know, there's, there's several parts um, to my history. So where did I get places? Where did I get? How did I get here today? For instance, is a good question that we can ask. But, uh, you know, how did that get to the point where um, we were doing pro wrestling videos as part of Sorgatron Media Incorporated? I'm still getting used to that. It's been almost a year. I'm still paying for it. Um, you know, it, it's it's emotionally sometimes. Um, you know, so so one of the things I'm, I'm probably proudest is, uh, of is, uh, you know, I work with pro wrestling. You know, it's it's a thing that transgently. Maybe a word I haven't used properly. It it uh it's one of those things that I can say very exclusively. You know, I'm here because I started a podcast ten years ago, right? Um, which I actually say broadly. I I say everything that I'm doing right now is because I started a podcast ten years ago. You know, I'm paying my mortgage on stuff that I have because of a podcast ten years ago. But one of those very specifically was getting into pro wrestling, um, from a production standpoint. Um, which uh, short story is, is, uh, I think I helped with the website, um, um, because I was doing the podcast, I was doing the site for the podcast. It came up in conversation somewhere along the line that somebody needs help with the website and maintenance. So that became a thing, which came around to, Hey, wonder if he does video. I don't know where that came around. I guess we did a video interview, uh, uh, with the sexual harassment tag team here locally in Pittsburgh, for instance. And that led to me being behind a camera ringside for several years, I think starting in 2007, uh, and, and becoming uh, part of the show in that part. And it was great. You know, it was great to kind of go out there and do that and become part of that as part of the Digital Horizons team and, uh, and, 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 and not have to worry so much about it. So when the opportunity came up, and it's really interesting how things happen like this. So it was the first year of my odyssey. I'll start calling it my odyssey from now on. Uh, that, that's the time that I left uh, my my job uh, fully to go independent, and and, and that became a thing. Um, and towards the end of there, uh, the opportunity came up of uh, the guy that was doing the pro wrestling stuff was done with it. I wanted to move on, and pretty much my name came up to both promoters that he was working with at the time, and it was there was some talk that had to be done for new contracts and everything like that. Cause you know, I, we're not doing anything with a contract around here um, or we can help it. And especially around res- pro wrestling, you, you're like, oh, you kind of want to have a contract. Right. Um, and there was that discussion and those kinds of things. Um, um, and we, we, we took the plan, the, the, the model that was uh, pro wrestling DVDs for these companies. And, and we took it over. Um, I ended up buying a lot of equipment from uh, the former proprietor of, of the videos for these companies. I, uh, I I went and bought a DVD duplicator. I, I had part of the 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 equation already done because of stuff that I was doing with my day job before then um, really translated well as far as the DVD authoring and duplication. So I had a lot of practice in that stuff and really kind of worked to build out that infrastructure to replace what he had done and what he had built over all those years. And it was a great product. It was a really great product. It was, it's DVDs that I watched and enjoyed over the years um, of, of these and still do as I bring up some of these old shows with CM Punk and old John McChesney on there. Um, back when he was fabulous. Uh, Colt Cabana back in his heyday. No, his, I mean, his heyday is kind of still happening, sort of, kind of. Um, but the young days of that stuff, just the legends they've had over the years. And it was... I was honored to take it over. I was stressed to take it over and figure that out and do the live switch. I wasn't worried about it. I was. I wasn't. I wasn't. I was excited about it because I loved live switching when we were doing uh, uh, new shows in high school, and, and I loved the idea of going and, and becoming part of that. But part of it was mentally, I was also very prepared for it, and I was always trying to work my head around to what if. I was in charge and and maybe this is something maybe this is why I have so many problems with having a day job um, because what do you do a lot of times you sit around and you look around and you're just like man I'd run this this place so much better 
I'd be a way better boss than these yahoos on top, you know? And uh, then you go and you become the yahoo on top. It's, it's, I guess I could call myself that. And so looking around, seeing, you know, uh, kind of paying attention, right? How does this video pre professional do this, you know? What is his process? Talking to him about that. In genuine interest, and not knowing that it's going to lead to doing the same thing in that spot that he was in and taking it over. But generally to learn from for other projects. There, there were definitely things that I learned from being behind a camera and assisting with the setup and everything um, with, with, uh, uh, you know, with that group that educated me towards other things, whether it be stuff that I did independently with projects, whether it be stuff I brought back to my day job, said, hey, guys, let's try this. You know, it, it was an educational experience beyond, hey, I didn't have to pay for an indie show that I'd be going to anyways, you know, so save a couple bucks and put a couple bucks in my pocket. And I got a very a good education about that. When I'm directing people uh, at ringside, I know what it's like to be there. And I actually a couple times a year, oof, not, I don't think I did that last year, but I need to get back out there again. I'd like to get a ringside again, you know just to remember what it was like, be a part of that, and uh, and do that. So, so I, it, the big thing here, there's a lot of patience. There was a lot of kind of in the back of my head, you know, there was like the, man, he he's getting really frustrated with this. <laughs> he could just walk away one day, and then what would I do, you know? And and for several years, I, 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 think, I think that was like, you know, what if he left it? What, you know, who would fill that void? Would they come to me? Okay, maybe not explicitly that question, but like, you know, what would I do? What could I offer them in order to do this? So when the opportunity came up, I, I was ready for it. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. I would love to do that. I'd love to take on that challenge. I'd love to see what I could bring to this. I'd love to be a part of getting this out there. And even since we, since we took over, beginning in 2012, first show was Pure Talent, Cage match between John McChesney and Jimmy DeMarco. Since then, we've seen the rise of Dalton Castle, now making ways of Ring of Honor and Rolling Stone. Holy crap. We've had legend shows involving the freaking Steiny, Steiner Brothers, Ric Flair, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Gold Dust, who's still on WWE. And the list goes on of some great stuff we film. We've seen the Renegade Wrestling Alliance build to an interesting indie promotion. That sounds way more demeaning than I intended it to be. But no, it's damn good stuff. And when I started, it wasn't really good stuff. I, I, it really wasn't. You know, but it, it, they were trying and they were building and they have built to such a great thing. And, and we've captured that progress. And who knows what stars are going to pop up in NXT, just like the drifter Eli Sampson, the former Logan Shulo. Um, and people that we've uh, interacted with over the years. And, and I guess, you know, I'll go back to, you know, there's taking the time and learning and being a part of stuff. And, and I mean, it goes to wrestling, too, where you're sitting back and you're learning from the old timers. It wasn't much of an old timer, but you're learning about the people that are in a position you want to be at, you know, and then finding that opportunity and taking it. It's patience. I got written down right here. It's patience and it's, it's, it's that willingness to step up. It's patience and observing. You're not coming out of college unless you're some crazy whiz kid. It's putting in the time and becoming the pro. And I hope that we've kind of stepped up what that product is. We've pushed it out beyond DVDs. We figured out what the next step is. And we're hoping to further refine that with IndieWrestling.us and find new partners like SmartMark Video. Like I just sent a big box out to Highmark doc high, high mark, something else highspots.com um and there's good relationships there to help get these on a bigger platform and i think that's really cool and that's just the pro wrestling part basis ergonomics thank you thank you so much for joining me on this and so many of these adventures we'll see you guys next time This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.